welcome to this video. This week, I've been thinking about something that I think is confusing for people who are new to modelers. Uh, when you start out with, with the guitar, you get a guitar, you get an amp, you plug them in, you're happy. You get some pedals, you put those in the middle, maybe later you get, put them in the effects loop if you're crazy, and uh, everything's just plugged into everything else. That's serial. But when you get to the modeler world, you all of a sudden you can do things that you normally would do in the studio with parallel processing. And I even use this. You can see I use this um, here with, you know, like sometimes delays, but mostly for me reverb, because I want to be able to um, control the input gain, but keep the mix the same so that the trails, uh, when I bring it back, the trails continue as they were. So just as an example, if I, have my pad sound, if I jump to my pad and I play a pad. Now that was a terrible musical example, but you heard there, I was in the pad, I did a swell, and then I cut to my clean sound uh, and I could play over the trails. And that's what I want, and I usually use parallel processing for that. But you don't need to do that. This is what I realized this week. You don't need to do that. So in this in this uh, video, I'm going to transform uh, this from what it is to uh, serial, completely serial, and I'm going to show you what I've figured out. What I've figured out is that everything, obviously I knew everything had a mix knob, but that the input gain is still effective, just like it would be if we're in parallel and the mix is 100%. All I need to do is take this, move it, so now we're serial, I'll delete this shunt, and I'll move the plex delay as well in a second. I'll make this 50% because that's that's what, anytime you're you're joining two paths, that's happening. It's summing it to mono, and so uh, it's a little bit of a different um, way to mix two signals, but it's still mixing the two signals back together. So you're getting half your dry signal, half of the wet signal. So if we flip this to 50%, now it's gonna be a little quieter. Uh, let me play. So hopefully you can hear that was a little quieter, but you know what? It's because we're getting 50% of the signal. It's, it's, it's because this mix is a little bit of a different way to, to some signals than it is when you uh, connect two paths together. We can, we're getting half as much, we can easily get twice as much. Bump it up 3 dB. Fun fact, every 3 dB is roughly about double the sound. So here we go. Now we're back to what we had before and I can use my same pad sound and you heard there, I still got my trails. I got to play over the trails of that reverb when it went to 100% and then it came back. Um, it's really that simple. It's the same. Now, let's talk about why, while I fix the plex delay, let's talk about, so why would you even use parallel processing in the first place? Well, if you truly need to split the signal. Um, and what that means is like, Usually speakers in the room. Um, if you are in a room or you want to give the front of house guy a wet and a dry, you may have heard this in terms of wet dry mix, right? Uh, really what it is is you're in the room, you wanna have one speaker that has just the dry sound, you wanna have another speaker that has the wet sound so that you can turn the wet sound up and down depending on what kind of room you're in, right? Because rooms have reverb, <laughs> right? If you're in a big, huge hall, Maybe the front of house guy wants to turn down your big, huge reverb. But if you're in a smaller room, you know, maybe that big reverb is giving you what you want. Or maybe you want to hear that in your ears and not hear it in the front of house, right? Just to give you a little more confidence boost or whatever. But anyways, this is just something I wanted to talk about this week because I've been thinking about it and I realized I didn't need to be doing what I was doing uh, to get the parallel, to, with the parallel processing to get uh, what I wanted out of it. And, and I think it's something that's potentially confusing. You see a lot of pros use this and you wonder why do I need to be doing that? And the answer is probably not, unless you are, want to send two separate signals to two separate speakers or two separate signals to your front of house mix. Uh, and there are reasons to do that, which I just sort of mentioned. Unless you're doing that, I don't really know that you need parallel processing or you're trying to do something specific like I wanna no, I don't think you need it. Comment below if you think I missed uh, a trick here and you think I'm totally crazy and there's a reason why you should use parallel processing. I think you shouldn't use it. Thank you for watching this video if you have been. And remember, if it sounds good, it is good.
That was it.